you know when you're like I don't know if you've been to New York or whatever or America but everything does feel like magnet you know magnified and it's big and you believe everything's possible the buildings are so tall and whatever but when I was there I was just kind of going what am I doing like because I have this ability to write music I kind of at that stage had explored that it was good music because I was getting a good response when I kind of entered into competition so I was like I really need to be doing this properly you know and the only way I can do that is make it my job so having that opportunity to take a year out of teaching obviously was a great kind of incentive it wasn't like I knew I was just going to go and, and never come back it was just more a case of um, take time out and see how it goes and learn a bit of the business and of course I took time out and I haven't got back <laughs> so <laughs> that was that's four what years ago now wasn't it yeah that's four years ago yeah 2010 was the year that I actually stopped it's definitely been a roller coaster I know that's a bit of a cliche thing to say but there is no other way to say it because just as you think maybe you're getting somewhere then maybe something will come into play that doesn't allow you to get much further on so and then you go another leap when you're not expecting it so it literally is a mixture of highs and lows constantly you know but um but good fun but like with a lot of challenges i kind of could do it i would love a wee break now you know what i mean um it's been a massive learning experience and i wouldn't change it for the world um and you I, were on the morning ireland as well i was tell yeah. us a little bit about that or how did that go about it's funny because i actually kind of experimented with my own pr over the last few years and read up on it and found how to write press releases and funnily enough one day I was like actually in my pajamas I was like I couldn't even be bothered to get dressed I was that kind of tired of it all I'd sent millions of press releases well I felt like millions it wasn't millions <laughs> but um, I just eventually wrote this really brief to the point like da 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 and next thing like that phone call from 2FM and TV3 and the RT Radio uh, John Murray show as well so something I'd written so obviously I kept that press release so I was going obviously this is the way to go with them like you know but um, it was it was kind of look at the draw too that I, I I picked on a topic that was interesting to them in that particular moment in time and went on that and it was a buzz I was so excited to have got there by myself you know what I mean yeah definitely and to That's reach a big audience like that yeah definitely and maybe uh, now the most recent has uh, the lovely Christmas single nearly yeah, Christmas, nearly Christmas yeah. so tell us a little bit about that and how did that come about like was it hard to maybe get a new Christmas hit out there well, it's funny because that song was kind of written by default, really, in that when I was teaching in 2006, um, the principal asked me what I'd perform at the class, would we do like something for the Christmas concert or whatever? And I was like, uh, yeah, sure, what we do, nativity or something like that? And he was like, well, whatever you want. And I said, well, wouldn't it be nice to have a new Christmas song? And I got the kids to kind of write down their ideas about what they'd like in a song and kind of just in the classroom wrote it. Yeah, and I ended up... got a lot of really play that year and every year it kept getting played and I was like there must be something in this so this year I said right you can't go through any more Christmases without recording this professionally and making it a real top class production so we pulled the song apart a little bit rebuilt it to production wise got a little new group of kids in and it's been like it's flying it's actually starting to just go on quite a lot of stations at the minute so it's very exciting because we've three weeks school to Christmas you know so obviously writing with the kids they give you so much about the magical experience of them so they really had to kind of the lyric content and then when we went into the studio to record it the main agenda was okay let's study all the Christmas songs that are still like out there and um, why are they still out there like what is about them what features have they got so we we looked at kind of standards uh, or really really successful Christmas songs and and try to incorporate some of the ideas into the song as well and then we, we felt that we really produced a great production like you know what I mean so so it's it's fun because you're, we're getting that feedback from people that the song is kind of up there with some of the, the most well-known Christmas songs so we have a few years now to keep pushing it you know definitely there's mm -hmm. been certainly a lot of highlights uh, throughout yeah. but wait, wait, what, what has been the most difficult time for you as a singer-songwriter out there on your own virtually yeah. on your own like, when you're doing your own PR yeah. you're trying to get your own music out there how What's been the down point maybe for yourself at the time? The down point is when you really, really believe in what you've got. And I think if you're going to put your neck on the line, you have to believe in what you've got. Any business person will say that as well. And starting to see music away from the music and as a business is a difficult process because you enjoy it so much as an artist, as a performer, as a writer. And then having to go into it and take it into the level of which you want it to be a viable business. Well, that's, not everybody chooses that route, but that was the route I chose to make it a business. And 
having to make that transition and be the business head sometimes and to be a certain person that I wouldn't be used to being like cracking the whip or and then on top of that if, like when you have a week of work done and you know that you sent approximately six to eight hundred emails and messages out and not one has come back with a reply like that is just that at times of that you kind of go I've just worked 60 hours this week and I have absolutely nothing to show for it, you know and that's that's hard to keep in that yeah, funny. It's, it's difficult and maybe um well, you have a great following though as regards good the good support to, to, as to date yeah. and especially with a uh, football team oh yes yeah. so if you tell us a little bit uh, the Farney army and, oh, yeah. and the, how that came about it has such a great uh, views on yeah, YouTube, YouTube as well yeah, so well, it's a great song yeah well it, I have to now uh, commend um, the guys who originally wrote it which was uh, Bob Dylan and Oprah Medicine Show they had uh, they were kind of co their co-owners of that song but basically uh, yeah, well, first of all, I played football myself uh, for years with Delta Ladies GA and Dundalk and loved it. Now, obviously, when I made music in my full time career and I was playing piano for a living, like playing and teaching it, there was a massive risk of injury, a shoulder injury, fingers, all that kind of stuff. And while it broke my heart, the only sensible thing to do was to kind of stop playing football and just keep fitness up in a different way. So I, I ended up leaving the football team. But then this summer, by pure, again, pure chance, of course, everybody says, oh, that was a great publicity stunt. But it so wasn't in the sense that I went to a northern radio station, a station called Northern Sound, or in Monaghan Cabin for Manor. And because it was the Ulster final weekend, I was like, I can't go on this show and not like sing something to do with the football team. I love football. So I took as much information about the football team I could guess, uh, facts about Monaghan, facts about everything I could find, I guess. And I took the wagon wheel tune, you know, rock me, mama, like, because it's a massive song in, in Monaghan. And um, I, took the, I took the words off, the original words, and just really rewrote the lyric. And while I was up there, I was like, oh, should I play this on air? And I played it on air, and like that, the response was amazing. The plan is 2014 is the album, because I have actually done, um, like, an EP, obviously. And an EP, people sometimes go, well, what's an EP and what's the difference? An EP is just really, um, a, a, like, a really professional demo, I call it nearly, like that, where you've done four or five tracks that would really showcase, I guess, the style of music that you do and produce it to a very high level so that when you do submit it to people, they get a, a kind of a real feel for what you do. But there's a completely different thing about actually making an album because you're doing up 10 to 12 tracks then. Obviously budget-wise that's a, well, a lot more expensive and in terms of what you have to do to get a light there and that is another big project in itself. I would love to be gigging a lot more than I do. I mean, unfortunately gigging is an expensive adventure apart from maybe doing open mics and showcase nights where it's not, you don't have to pay to play. Now, in saying that too, obviously you have to go to the venue. So, you know, it's it's it adds up. Yeah, yeah, so I find that I've done it like over a period of maybe six to eight months, one year, and it did cost me a lot. So I was out a lot of pocket for that, but at the same time, it brought me an audience. So you have to weigh up the pros and cons of it. So I would ideally, I suppose, Lena, love to see myself in a position that my name had an attachment as a as a good songwriter with versatility as a songwriter, not necessarily just being my own artist, but that people say, well, that girl actually can write, you know, a variety of sides, but in the same go, she actually has her her niche, her artist niche, and take that then, hopefully with a bit of money and that behind me to corners of the world that maybe people would like to hear what I do. So I'd love to be, you know, going here, there, and everywhere. Um, that is the plan. But again, it's a case of whether luck comes with it and, you know, the hard work and the luck will come at the same time. So do a little bit of verse and chorus of a little song called A Million Hearts. It's only new, but it's about... Um, you know somebody has had their heart broken and it's just kind of like the message in the song really is not uh, negative it's more so a case of like don't be fooled I suppose into thinking that the person's broken heart may not come around again and do it again so in a way just kind of let it go do you know what I mean so I'll give you a wee bit of the, of the first verse and chorus it goes like this um, I should have known it was something I should have known and I should have walked away but I stayed to watch then you held it out to me Oh, so delicate and free You cast a spell and I was bound to what would be And years have passed Another spell that didn't last Now you're my piano, but da -da 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 -da. Sorry, that's inevitable And <laughs> it goes, of course, it's like the and now it's in a million parts The broken pieces of a fickle, shallow heart that you gave to me. Du -du 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 -du. I'm sorry, it has to be done. <laughs> it's only now that I can see you got a million different hearts lined up for free. And your heart breaks door, so I'm not coming back for more. 
So I apologise about the piano playing, but you know, yeah, you're yeah. so used to having the two in one hand, like they, they go so much hand in hand, it's yeah. a little bit like weird, and you're kind of filling in your wee bits. That's definitely something I need to kind of work on, get the hands away. But um, <laughs> no, it's good. It's good to actually take it away and kind of listen to the song. Cause sometimes actually, you don't um, hear the song. Sometimes they step away, and when you're engaged in the music as well, it's sometimes you go, ah, I never thought about it like that, you know. Yeah. Or, that we spin on it, so no, it's that's lovely. a little taste of a million hearts. So definitely, there's definitely a lot, a message in there mm. as well. It's not just a song thrown together. No, with a little message. I think there's a big message in it, and it's really nice to yeah. get a taste of what your singer songwriter is all about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so thank you so much. You're welcome. And thanks for having me. Yeah. Best of luck in the coming year. We look thank forward you. to seeing your new album, and uh, we'll certainly look you up. Sinead McNally is the best. Yeah. Find, you. find me if you Google my name. The website will come up and. Facebook and Twitter and all my music is on iTunes as well so there's plenty of links and that'll be very, very easy to find anyway, yeah. Super, well good luck to you. Thanks very much Lena.